Welcome back to the Adventures of Banana Boy. All right. Page 8. Instant death. Many people believe that because God is good, he will forgive everyone and let all sinners into heaven. But you already said that that's an imaginary God, not the real one. The real one's a prick. <laughs> Just like you, Ray. All right. But they understand. But they misunderstand his goodness. Pray tell. When Moses once asked to see God's glory, God told him that he couldn't see him and live. So he showed him his backside. Yeah. Moses would instantly die if he looked upon God. There's quite a few people that said God spoke to him face to face. Uh, consider this, and he goes into a quote. God said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of a rock and will cover you with mine hand while I pass by. So he can see his backside. Yeah. That way you only see the moon. Notice that all of God's glory was displayed in his goodness. <laughs> I didn't notice that. The goodness of God would have killed Moses. God can do anything, including show himself. If he's real, and he can do anything, he can do anything with, with limitations. Because he's so unlimited. All right. goodness of God would have killed Moses instantly because of his uh, personal sinfulness. The fire of God's goodness would have consumed him like a cup of water dropped on onto the surface of the sun. It wouldn't even get close. But there's a teapot, um, tea kettle circling, circling Jupiter, I understand. You can't prove there isn't. Can you? All right. Uh, the only way any of us can stand in the presence of God is to be pure in heart, like Ray yeah, and Kurt Cameron, the crocodile boy. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. As we've seen by looking at God, not a single one of us is pure in heart. So, so Jesus was playing with those tricks like Ray does, you know. There really aren't any pure of heart, so blessed are, well, nobody. <laughs> <coughs> These are extremely fearful thoughts. You're just full of fear there, Ray. Because... The God we are speaking about is nothing like the commonly accepted image. He's invisible. He is not a benevolent father figure who is happily smiling upon humanity. No, he's pissed off. In the midst of these frightening thoughts, remember to let fear work for you. The fear of God is the healthiest fear we can have. The, fe the, the Bible calls it the beginning of wisdom. Okay. Uh, 
can, your knowledge of God's law should help you to see that you have a life-threatening dilemma. An afterlife-threatening dilemma, actually. A huge problem of God's wrath. His justifiable anger against your personal sins. The just penalty of sin, breaking even one law, is death. So we, we're all going to die, so bang, paid. All right. And eternity in hell. Ooh. <laughs> so me and Ray is going to be hanging out. All right. But you haven't broken just one law, like the rest of us. You've no doubt broken all these laws countless times each. I still like my parents. <laughs> And there was something else I didn't do. I don't know. I haven't killed anybody. Not yet. Um, killed some soldiers. All right. Um. What kind of anger do you think a judge is justified in having towards a criminally guilt, criminal guilty of breaking the law thousands of times? Let's see. Let's now look at those four major religions to see how they can help you with your predicament. I was wondering if he's going to get back to that. Hinduism. All right. Hinduism, according to Ray Comfort, the Christian, who wants you to be a Christian. So he's going to tell you the truth about Hinduism right now. The religion of Hinduism says that if you've been bad, you may come back as a rat or some other animal. If you've been good, you might come back as a prince. But that's like someone saying, when you jump out of a plane, you'll get sucked back in as another passenger, is it? If you've been bad, you go down to the economy class. That's kind of a straw man, don't you think? That's not what they say. It's an interesting concept, but it doesn't deal with your real problem of having sinned against God and the reality of hell. See, he's impartial. Buddhism. Amazingly, the religion of Buddhism denies that God even exists. That's amazing. It teaches that life and death are sort of an illusion. It's funny because I meet all kinds of Buddhistic Christians. They talk about karma all the time. They keep trying to tell them karma has to do with reincarnation. They go, no, 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 you pay in this life for being bad. That's like saying at the door of the plane and saying, I'm not really here, and there's no such thing as a law of gravity that, and no ground that I'm going to hit. That may temporarily help you deal with your fears, but it doesn't square with reality. And Ray knows all about reality. He believes in guys ar arguing with their donkeys and uh, being yanked up into heaven in a flying chariot with flaming horses and <laughs> magic trees and talking snakes and all that. Yeah. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Um, and it doesn't deal with your real problem of having sinned against God and the reality of hell. I just said that, sorry. Islam. All right. Now they believe in hell and sin and all that. Let's see how they fucked it up. Interesting. Interestingly, Islam acknowledges the reality of sin and hell and the justice of God. But the hope it offers is that sinners can escape God's justice if they do religious works. God will see these, and because of 
them, hopefully he will show mercy. <sighs> but they won't know for sure. Well, they have faith. That's why they don't need to know for sure. Each person's works will be weighed on the day of judgment, and it will then be decided who is saved and who is not, based on whether they followed Islam. And with sincere, worse, oh wait, were sincere in repentance and performed enough righteous deeds to outweigh their bad ones. So Islam believes that you can earn God's mercy by the following efforts. Oh. Um, so Islam believes that you can earn God's mercy by your own efforts. That's like jumping out of a plane and believing that flapping your arms is going to counter the laws of gravity and save you from a 10,000 foot drop. See, Ray knows when other religions are being ridiculous, doesn't he? And there's something else to consider. The law of God shows us that the best of us is nothing but a wicked criminal with low self-esteem. Okay. Standing guilty and condemned before the throne of a perfect and holy judge. When that is understood, then our righteous deeds are actually seen as an attempt to bribe the judge of the universe. And yet you guys kiss his ass all the time by praising him. The Bible says that because of our guilt, anything we offer God for our justification, our acquittal from his courtroom, is an abomination to him and only adds to our crimes. So stop sucking up to him also. You know, all those hymns and praise ye, praise ye the Lord. He sees through that shit. Islam, like the other religions, doesn't solve your problem of having sinned against God and the reality of hell. I don't see any quotes from the Quran here. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Ray's read the Quran. He seems to know all about these things. He knows all about evolution. <laughs> That's why he doesn't believe it. Christianity. So, why is Christianity different? Aren't all religions the same? Let's see. Is, wait, in Christianity, God himself provided a parachute for us. And his word says regarding the Savior, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as a parachute solved your dilemma with the law of gravity and its consequences, so the Savior perfectly solves your dilemma with the law of God and its consequences. It is the missing puzzle piece that you need. He could just twist things around, can't he? <sighs> How did God solve our dilemma? He satisfied his wrath by becoming a human being and taking our punishment upon himself. Because he couldn't just forgive. He can't do that. Someone's got to bleed. Suffering has to happen. It's just his way. All right, um, the scriptures tell us that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Christianity provides the only parachute to save us from the consequences of the law we have transgressed. Uh, all right, back to the plane. The plane, the plane. Um, to illustrate, this more clearly, please do. It's pretty muddled so far. Let's go back to the plane for a moment. You are standing on the edge of a 10,000 foot drop. You have to jump. Your heart is thumping in your chest. Why? That fear, right? Because of fear. I knew it. You know that the law of gravity will kill you when you jump. 
Someone offers you the original Mona Lisa, you push it aside. <laughs> Another person passes you the keys to a brand new Lamborghini. That happens all the time. You let it drop to the floor. Someone else tries to put a million dollars in your hand. I grab it and, and the parachute and jump out. <laughs> Just kidding. I do a D.B. Cooper. All right. Um... You push the person's hand away and stand there in horror at your impending fate. He's so dramatic. Suddenly, your voice, suddenly you hear a voice say, here's a parachute. Which one of these four people are you going to hold the more credible in your eyes? It's the one who held the parachute. Thank you for, I wasn't sure. Thank you. All right. He gave me the answer. Again, it is your fear of the jump that turns you towards the good news of the parachute. So he's not using fear tactics or anything, but fear is good. In the same way, knowledge of God's law will do uh, to you. Wait, law will do to you. In the same way of what God's law will do to you produces fear that makes the news of the Savior unspeakably good news. Between a frying pan and the fire, I guess. Rock in the hard place. All right. Basically, you're fucked. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um... It solves your predicament of God's wrath. God or God? God or God Jr., excuse me. Uh, the sadist or the masochist? <laughs> All right. Um, God loves you so much that he became a sinless human being in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The Savior died in excruciating death on the cross, taking your punishment, the death penalty, temporarily, upon himself. The demands of eternal justice were satisfied the moment he cried, it is finished. The lightning of God's wrath was stopped, and the thunder of his indignation was silenced at Calvary's bloodied cross. And that makes a lot of sense. If you really don't think about it much. <sighs> Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse of us uh, for us. We broke the law, but he made a man to pay our penalty in his life's blood. Then he rose from the dead, defeating death. That means that God can now forgive death every sin you have ever committed and commute your death sentence. He did it for Ted Bundy. He did it for uh, uh, the son of Sam and Dahmer and all those people. They're all going to heaven. BTK used to pray for his victims. He had his fun, but he did pray for their souls. All right. Um, so that was nice of him. Um, If you repent and place your trust in Jesus, you can say with uh, with the apostle, for the law of the spirit of, of life in Christ Jesus has made me free of the law of the sin and of sin and death. So you no longer need to be tormented by the fear of death, and you don't need to look any further for ways to deal with the dilemma of sin and God's wrath. Next time you got to jump out of the plane, just take a Bible. Fuck the parachute. The Savior is God's gift to you. 2,000 years ago. The gospel is unspeakably good news 
for the entire sinful human race. God himself can justify you. He can cleanse you and give you the righteousness of Christ. He can make you pure in heart by washing away your sins. He can shelter you from <coughs> his fierce, fierce wrath. He can protect you from himself, with himself, suffering for himself. I mean, he became a sacrifice of himself to himself for you. Think about that. Okay. God himself can justify you. He can cleanse you. He can give you the righteousness of Christ. He can make you pure in heart by washing away your sins. He can shelter you from his fierce wrath in the rock of ages that he has cleft for you. That's from a song, by the way. Uh, a hymn. Only Jesus can save you from death and hell. Something that you could never earn or deserve or get from those other fucking faiths that are all false. Too bad they got faith. If they'd only think about it, they would have faith in this bullshit instead. It did stop thinking about it again. Okay, do it today. To receive the gift of eternal life, you must repent of your sins, turn from them, and put on the Lord Jesus Christ as you would put on a parachute, trusting in him alone for your salvation. That means you forsake your own good works as a means of trying to please him, trying to bribe him, and trust only in what Jesus has done for you, like Ted Bundy did. Uh, simply throw yourself on the mercy of the judge. The Bible says that he's rich in mercy to all who call upon him. All of them. So call upon him right now. He will hear you if you approach him with a humble and sorrowful heart. <coughs> and a bent back. Um, do it right now because you don't know when you will take that leap through the door of death. Confess your sins in God. Put your trust in Jesus to save you. And you will pass from death to life. You'll be alive, dead, and then back to, and then alive forever. And happy about it. It'll be better next time. You have God's promise on it. Pray something like this. He's going to give us a sample prayer. Dear God, today I turn away from all of my sins. Name them. If you can remember them all. And I put my trust in Jesus Christ alone as my Lord and Savior. And eh, throw Krishna in just in case. Um... Please forgive me, change my heart, and grant me your gift of everlasting, everlasting life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Close quote. Now, have faith in God. He is absolutely trustworthy, just like Ray Comfort. Ah, never doubt his promises. He is not a man that he should lie. He's a God. Not a man at all. Although he was one temporarily. Um, the sincerity of your prayer will be evidenced by your obedience to God's will. So read his word, the Bible, daily and obey what you read. Definitely read the Bible. I recommend everybody read the Bible. Especially those who already believe it. Then go to www.livingwaters.com and click on Save yourself some pain. <laughs> there you will find principles that will help you grow in your faith. You might like to get the Evidence Bible, which answers 100 of the most common questions 
about the Christian faith, which he's completely proven with this little publication. And he blew away Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, and well, that's it. Uh, its informative commentary will help you to grow as a Christian. Another resource to help you learn more about your faith and how to share it is the Way of the Master Radio. See, he's telling you where to go. I know where he can go. Listen to it freely at www.wayofthemaster.com. See, I'm helping out. Please don't toss this booklet aside. If it's been helpful to you, pass it on to someone you care about. There's nothing more important than where you will spend eternity. Thank you for reading this. May God continue to bless yours, Ray Comfort. And there you go. <sighs> I did better than pass, toss it away. I read it here on the interwebs. All of you heard it. And I'll put links wherever they go these days. Chime in. Let me know if this helped you out. I may be creating new Christians right now. Peace the fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is you're having. And if you got nothing better to do. Or um, one of these. I don't know. Bye.